Nancy, over to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming here today and for everyone online um, for attending my presentation. Um, as Peter mentioned, I'm going to be presenting some of the very recent preliminary findings um, from our study um, looking at pre and post legalization patterns of cannabis use and perceptions among Canadian workers. So first, I just want to acknowledge um, the research team, which is based primarily here at uh, the Institute, as well as um, Michael Throne from the University at Buffalo, uh, as our funder, the Canadian Institutes for Health Research, and our stakeholder advisory uh, committee, who has been instrumental in providing um, input, um, fantastic input on our the content of our survey, as well as interpreting the findings. So I'm not gonna go too much into background because I have a lot to present in terms of the findings. Um, I think everybody knows by now that on October 17th, 2018, um, Canada officially legalized the use of non-medical um, cannabis. And that came with a lot of hype, a lot of fanfare, um, some trepidation as well about the unknowns. Uh, but we're certainly not the only um, country to be changing our policies around cannabis use. So worldwide, we're seeing um, evolving legislation around cannabis, um, with major, ma mainly with a focus on medical cannabis. Um, we, what sets us apart is that we're only the second country worldwide to legalize cannabis for non-medical purposes at a federal level. And so with that, there has been a lot of talk about um, we're sort of embarking on this um, national experiment. We don't really know what to expect. Um, there are some states in the US that have legalized cannabis um, in individual states, a handful, for non-medical purposes. Um, but they've, they've used a di very different model than we have here in Canada. Um, Canada has really tried to approach it from um, a public health and safety uh, model, trying to protect public health and safety. And so we're, we whether the findings that we're starting to see in the US in terms of the impact of uh, legalization can be generalized here is unknown. So it's about a year, it's been about a year and a half now, just shy of a year and a half since we've legalized uh, cannabis for non-medical purposes. Statistics Canada just released a couple of weeks ago the first um, set of pre-post findings um, from the National Cannabis Survey. And what they found is that um, overall, past uh, three-month cannabis use has increased in Canada. So it's increased um, from about 15% to just shy of 17%. So that's um, about an increase of about from four and a half million Canadians who were using cannabis in the three, past three months in 2018. Um, to about 5.1 million Canadians now. And when we look at the findings um, by age, we see that um, among working aged adults, um, there have been increases, steady increases in, in the 25 to 44 year age group uh, and the 45 to 64 year age group. But we don't really, so what actually has happened? What has changed among Canadian workers? Have overall cannabis use patterns changed? Are more workers using cannabis before or at work? Are workers thinking differently about um, cannabis at work? And what's changed in workplaces? Are workplaces introducing policies? Are, has drug testing changed? These are the sorts of questions that we set out to um, answer with, with our uh, longitudinal cohort study. And so I'm going to be presenting some of the findings from the pre and post um, survey that we conducted. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. I kind of want to have a sense what everyone else thinks about um, what has possibly changed. So what I want everybody to do, um, if you have your phones, everyone on the webinar as well, if you have your phones, um, what I want you to do is go to slido.com. So you just enter a slido exactly the way it's shown on the, on the presentation. So enter slido.com. A little bit later on in the presentation, as before I start to present some of the findings, I'm going to give you an event code and then I'll prompt you to answer some of the questions. But I just wanted everyone to get their phones out and ready. 
All right. So as I mentioned, we have this uh, longitudinal study. It's um, a five-year study um, where we're, the, the goal is to look at the impact of cannabis legalization on Canadian workers, um, on Canadian workers, so on their use patterns and on their perceptions. So we're conducting surveys um, yearly um, from 2018. We started in 2018, which was just before legalization through to 2021. Uh, so workers are invited to participate from across Canada. Um, they are eligible if they are employed for at least 15 hours per week in workplaces with five or more employees. They can come from a um, variety of occupations and industries. And we're interested in, um, in surveying not only people who use cannabis, but also those who don't. Um, we recruited our sample through um, a, a company called Ecos Research Associates. They've helped to recruit our sample, and um, the sample has come primarily from this pre-existing panel of about 100,000 households, um, where people have agreed to participate in surveys from time to time. And a very small proportion, only about 5%, um, were also uh, recruited through traditional random digit dialing. So as I mentioned, um, we started our survey back in 2018, about four months um, before legalization, and we recruited 2014 workers. Our second survey um, was done last year from July to September of 2019, and we, we followed up with the workers that participated in the first survey, and we were able to get um, 1,099 um, workers that participated in that first survey to participate again at survey two. Um, but we also supplemented that and recruited an additional sample. So our total sample at cycle two was 4,101 workers. Um, and just to keep in mind that that first survey occurred before cannabis was legalized. The second survey came just after, but before edibles were introduced to the market. And we have two more surveys um, that, we've been fun that we have funding for um, that will be completed in the summer of 2020 and then 2021. So I'm just gonna be focused on providing some of the descriptive findings from the first two surveys. Um, so in terms of the survey content, um, we asked all respondents a, a variety of questions um, to gather their um, perspectives on workplace cannabis use. So we asked them some questions around um, their knowledge of cannabis effects, um, what the culture was in their workplaces around cannabis, so the norms, how physically available it was, um, what they thought, um, how risky they thought cannabis use at work is or how acceptable it is, um, what they believed would be allowed after legalization at work in terms of use, and um, a few questions around their workplace policies and practices. We also asked a number of questions just about themselves, so um, their job characteristics, um, health and lifestyle characteristics, and um, sociodemographics. Anything with um, a star there are um, new items that we added to the second survey cycle. And uh, we also, of course, asked about lifetime and past year cannabis use. I won't be able to present everything that I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning, sort of the breadth of the, of the survey um, that we have, but I won't be able to present all the findings. It's just going to be a select, um, select findings today. Um, and then among people who reported using cannabis in the past year, we wanted to get a better sense of their cannabis use patterns. So we asked questions around how frequently they used it, how they were using it, the type of product they were using, um, why they were using it. One new question we added to the second survey was whether they were using it to treat a work-related condition, which I do have some of those findings. Um, and of course, whether they're using cannabis before or at work. Um, that was a, a, a major concern leading up to legalization um, among the occupational health and safety community. Uh, we also added a question that I have some results for around use before um, driving to and from work. So um, 
First, I'm going to start by presenting some of the overall cannabis use patterns. And when I say overall cannabis use, it's not specific to use before or at work. So this is where we're going to give this a go and see if this works. The question that I have for you is, since legalization, has the percentage of workers using cannabis overall, again, not specific to work, but overall, do you think it's increased, decreased, or remained the same? Let me see if I can get, and remember, no, we can't see anyone's responses, so feel free, just be as honest as you think. So I think really, I mean, there's still some, there's still some responses coming in, but I think generally speaking, most people think that um, overall cannabis use will have increased among Canadian workers in our sample. So has it? Um, so these are, this is what we found. So everyone was, or two thirds were correct. Um, what we have found is that, um, so the blue represents before legalization, um, the orange after legalization. And we categorized people according to whether they had never used cannabis, whether they used cannabis more than 12 months ago, and whether they used cannabis in the last 12 months. And what we see is that there's really no change in the the prevalence of never use, um, a decrease in people that formerly used cannabis, and an increase um, from 29% to 38% of workers in our sample who reported using cannabis in the past year. And again, that is, um, it's, it is, it's quite, it's, it's a bigger increase than what we're seeing um, in that other, uh, that other survey, the National Cannabis Survey, but it is in line with what we're seeing. We're, uh, we are, we're seeing an increase in, in overall use. Um, in terms of the frequency of cannabis use, um, so while we're seeing an increase in overall use, we're actually seeing um, more, less frequent use. So I think what this suggests um, what we see is that um, among workers in our sample, among people who reported past year use, um, we see an increase of from 36% to 41% of workers who say that they've used it less than one day a month. And on the other end, we're seeing a decrease in people reporting more frequent use. What this suggests to me is that um, people while we see more workers are using cannabis, they're probably just trying it. They're not, we're not seeing any increases in people that are suddenly becoming daily, um, daily users. Uh, we don't see, um, in terms of statistically speaking, we don't see any changes in why they're using it. So we asked people whether they were using it for non-medical purposes, medical purposes, or a mix of medical and non-medical. Um, the trend is towards um, a little bit more towards um, some sort of medical purpose, so either strictly medical or a mix. Um, but statistically speaking, it wasn't significant. What we did see is that um, before legalization, among this group of people who said that they did use cannabis for medical or a mix of purposes, um, before legalization, 41% said that they had a medical authorization. Um, after legalization, that dropped to 27%. Um, but again, I think what that suggests is that there's a, a lot of people that might be trying cannabis. Um, they may be trying it because they heard that it could be helpful for their pain, it could be helpful for their anxiety, um, and they're not necessarily getting a medical authorization. They just decided that, hey, it's legal now and maybe we're just gonna, we're just gonna try it. Uh, so this was a new question that we added, so we don't have any pre-legalization findings, but we asked workers um, at Survey Cycle 2 whether they were using their cannabis um, to manage a work-related injury or illness. And 16% um, actually said they did, which I think is a really important um, finding in that we are starting to see um, some changes um, among the workers' compensation boards across Canada in terms of developing new policies around um, medical cannabis as a therapeutic measure um, for work-related conditions. So um, this is a fairly new finding that we um, don't have yet in the literature. 
So turning now to workplace cannabis use patterns, I'm gonna have you now go back again to um, Slido. And I think I have to. So the question is, since legalization, do you think that the percentage of workers using cannabis before and or at work has increased, de decreased, or remained the same? It's a little more split. Um, so 56% so far saying they think it's remained the same. 37% say it's incre they think it's increased, and only 6% or 8% now decreased. Okay. So what did we find? So this is looking at among people who've reported cannabis use in the past year. Um, we asked them whether they had used cannabis either in the two hours before work, um, at work, while working, on breaks, or at the end of the work day, but still at the workplace. So among those who report um, using cannabis um, in the past year, we see that um, we see a drop in those who report using cannabis before or at work from 26% before legalization to 21% after legalization. Um, we actually presented this to our stakeholder advisory committee um, last week, and of course, this was a, this is not exactly we, you wouldn't this isn't what we were expecting. Um, certainly, before legalization, there was a lot of concern about increases in use. Um, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that because we do have this influx of workers that are trying cannabis, we have a greater number of workers who are, who are using cannabis now, but just sort of trying it out infrequently, we wouldn't necessarily expect that they're going to be trying it and then trying it right before work as well. If they're going to try it, they'll probably try it on the weekend. So what we did is we looked at this among, worker, among all work respondents. So when we don't um, limit it to people who have used cannabis in the past year, we we're look among all respondents, we find no change. So among all respondents in our sample, 7% um, before legalization reported using cannabis before or at work, and that compares to 8% after. Um, and statistically speaking, there was no significant difference. So there was no change um, in the workplace use before and after legalization. We looked at this um, specifically within the four um, contexts that we asked about. So on the left-hand side, it's use within two hours before work. On the right-hand side, use while on breaks. Again, we see no change here. And then these two are on the left-hand side while working, excluding breaks. And then on the left um, on the right-hand side, after work, while at the workplace, and again, no change. So there really has been no change before and after legalization. Um, this was in response to, again, our stakeholder advisory committee wanting to know in terms of differences across industries. And again, um, we don't really see any, any differences um, in workplace use across um, industry types. Um, there is a bit of a blip here. Um, with manufacturing, trade, transport, and warehousing, um, which, again, this is among all respondents. Um, it wasn't statistically significant, um, but of course, you know, future surveys will be important to see how, how um, the trend continues. And we also looked at workplace use um, according to workplace size. Um, and again, there was no significant differences between um, before and after legalization according to different uh, workplace sizes. This was a new question that we asked. Um, we asked respondents whether they had used cannabis within two hours of driving um, to or from work in the past year at any point. 11% um, said yes, they have. So we don't know what frequency they've done this. It might have been once, it might have been twice, it might have been a regular occurrence. But we do know that 11% um, have said that at some point they have done that. And we also asked workers whether they had ever bought or received cannabis at um, work in the past year. Um, and 7% of those who had used cannabis in the past year reported doing so. So not a very common, um, not a very common occurrence, um, but again, something to sort of keep in mind going forward.
Um, so we also asked all respondents whether they had, whether they were using cannabis or not. We asked them a series of questions around um, what the norms were in their workplaces, the policies, um, and the types of information they might be receiving. So this first set of questions um, were really to try to get understand how physically available cannabis was in their workplaces. So we asked workers, um, thinking about your main job, how easy or difficult would it be to bring cannabis into work, that's on the left-hand side, um, and on the right-hand side to get, buy, or sell cannabis at work. And um, we do see um, a significant change in terms of um, workers saying that they think it's a bit, they think it's easier now to bring cannabis um, into work. Um, there's no significant, statistically speaking, there's no significant change in terms of getting, buying, or selling cannabis at work. Um, whether that's more about, um, these are interesting questions because whether that, whether it's truly easier to bring it into work or whether it's just that people are thinking about it more um, is, it, we're not really sure, but it'll be something to keep in mind moving forward. We also asked about whether, um, how easy or difficult they think it would be to use cannabis, either during lunch or other breaks, that's on the left-hand side, um, or while working, and we don't really see a change. So people don't think it's any easier or any more difficult to use cannabis um, at work. Uh, we also asked a series of questions to try and understand whether they think their coworkers are using cannabis at work. So that speaks to sort of um, what the norms and the culture is in their workplace. So we asked all respondents um, during the past 12 months, how often do you think that your coworkers used cannabis, um, either two hours before work, that's on the left-hand side, um, and on the right-hand side, um, how often that they might have used cannabis at work, so while working or on breaks. Um, and what we see is that workers tend, there, there tends to be more workers reporting that their coworkers are using cannabis with some degree of frequency to, within two hours before work or at work. We also see though that this drop in people that are reporting don't know. So, in, so as an example, um, on the right, on the left hand side, 20% of workers pre-legalization said that they didn't know if their coworkers were using cannabis before work. That's dropped now to 17%. So some of this suggests that maybe people are just more aware of what's happening. Um, it may, I mean, it may represent that there's more use going on at work, but I think that it also just is really that it's more top of mind and people are really thinking about it. Before they might have said, I don't really know, and now they have more of a, more of a definitive response. And we start, we see the same thing here when we ask the same question about use of cannabis within two hours before safety sensitive work. Um, we see more workers saying either occasionally, regularly, that they think that their coworkers are doing this. Fewer workers are saying that they don't really know. Um, we asked work, so in the lead up to legalization, everything we kept hearing it about is workplaces need to get their policies in place. Um, and I think they listened because um, when we asked whether your, we asked workers whether their organizations have formal policies on substance use in the workplace, and we see a huge increase. So 63% before um, legalization said that they had one, and now 79% of workers are saying that their, their workplaces do have substance use policies. And among those who say that they did ha that they do have a policy, we asked whether that policy explicitly mentions cannabis. And again, we see a huge increase. Um, this was a real uh, cannabis legalization um, was good in the sense that it really got the workplaces thinking about um, not just cannabis use but impairment in general. Um, and so I, I think it's just it's a reassuring finding that workplaces are sort of trying to get that um, those policies in place in their workplaces. Um, in terms of drug testing, we did ask whether their workers, whether they have a drug testing program, and we see no change before and after legalization. And we wouldn't really necessarily expect a change um, because nothing um, has changed legislatively to allow for more drug testing to take place. So this is in line with what we would expect, that we wouldn't expect any drug 
um, testing programs to increase. We asked workers also, um, and just on the survey cycle two, whether their employer has provided any sort of education or information on cannabis use um, or the effects of cannabis. So more broadly than just having a policy in place. And um, most said no, so 60% said no, that they hadn't received any sort of information at work about cannabis. Um, and 15% said that they didn't know. So I think that, um, that could be an area, you know, not having, the literature suggests that having a policy isn't enough. You need to be more proactive. You have to have these sort of proactive educational measures. Um, so I think this is really um, an important finding that um, workplaces probably just, we probably need to do a little bit better in providing um, more of that proactive education. So one last question. Um, so I'll just, what percentage of workers, um, what percentage of workers report that they are aware, this is what you think we found, what percentage of workers report that they're aware of a protocol at work that outlines the steps that they should take if they suspect a coworker is impaired? So how many workers really think that they have this sort of procedure in place, um, that they know exactly what to do, and, and it's all laid out at work? Okay, so most people think that we found that 14, only 14% 14 of workers are reporting that. So people are very negative about it. <laughs> okay, so what did we find? So, um, what we actually found was that 39% of workers said that they are aware of some sort of protocol or method in place um, to um, report that a worker um, is, uh, that they think a worker might be impaired. But the interesting finding I think too here is that 9% um, say that they have a, a protocol in place or they know of it, but they don't feel necessarily comfortable using it. Um, but again, we have 33% of people who say that they don't think that there is any sort of protocol, and 28% say they don't know. And again, I think that really speaks to um, an education gap in our workplaces. Um, and then I think this is probably one of the last ones. So this is around personal perception. So we wanted to ask workers what they actually thought about uh, workplace cannabis use. So one of the questions we asked was around how much they thought um, workers risk interference with performance and productivity when using cannabis within two hours before work, that's on the left-hand side, and then uh, while working, including lunch um, and other breaks. And statistically speaking, we do see ch it, it, there is a significant change, but really when you look at the numbers, there hasn't been much of a change. So generally speaking, workers still think, um, you know, that it's moderately to, there's a moderate or great risk of, of using cannabis within each of these two time periods. Not much change between pre and post legalization. But what I always want to point out to everyone is that when you look at how people report use within two hours before work and then within um, while working, workers tend to think that use before work is less risky. Um, and that, again, I think speaks to a knowledge gap that we need to um, address. And then the last one was around asking workers whether they think um, that what they thought about how harmful it would be to use cannabis within two hours before safety sensitive work. Again, um, not much change. Um, people still, whatever, they, whatever people were thinking before legalization, they're thinking pretty much the same now. Um, and then finally, we wanted to know what they actually thought would be allowed um, in terms of workplace cannabis use after legalization. So before legalization, we asked them um, will a worker be allowed to use cannabis for non-medical purposes at the workplace? Um, on, that's on the left-hand side. And to use cannabis for medical purposes at the workplace without a medical authorization? That's on the right-hand side. And then, of course, after legalization, we said, is, are those two things allowed? Um, so this was a sort of an interesting piece that I wasn't expecting, is that um, 
we we're, we kind of see this drop in people um, where we think where um, there's a drop in people that or there's an increase in people who think that it might possibly be allowed um, after legalization. So um, as an example, when we look at use of cannabis for non-medical purposes at the workplace, we see an increase in the proportion of workers who think it might be possible in some cases, so from 11% to 13%. Um, and then when we look at cannabis for medical purposes without a medical authorization, we see an increase in those saying possibly in some cases from 24% um, to 26%. And we asked the same question about um, whether they think use of cannabis on a break, like a cigarette, would be allowed. Um, and we see the same sort of findings that um, we see an increase from 14% to 17% in those who think possibly in some cases this would be allowed after legalization. So actually, so I'm, I'm good on time. Um, hopefully I haven't gone too fast. Um, so I think in terms of just to, sum, to summarize what we found, um, the prevalence, I think, of past year overall use has increased. We've, se we've seen that. Um, never use really hasn't changed. Um, what the findings really suggest, I think, is that um, people who have, weren't using cannabis before, most are probably not using it now. We may be sort of seeing this maybe some former former users, people who might have used back in the past and said, oh, now it's legal, maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it again. But we also don't see um, any sort of increase in, in more frequent use. We actually see frequency decreasing. Um, again, I think people are probably just trying it. Um, in terms of workplace use, we don't see any change in the prevalence. The bottom line is we haven't seen a change. Um, and this is across industries, across workplace size. Um, but still keep in mind that among people who report who reported using cannabis in the past year, one fifth were still still said that they were using cannabis before at work. So that's still a number I think to keep in mind. And in our sample, that's equivalent to about eight percent of workers. Um, we saw an increase also in the prevalence of workers who were reporting having a substance use policy, which I think is um, which is great. Um, it's a bit unclear, I think, as I mentioned, how to interpret the data on workplace norms. So when we ask people about whether their coworkers were using cannabis, um, whether that actually reflects um, an increase in work workers, coworkers using, or whether it's that you're just, everyone is just more aware of the issue and has a response, um, it's not clear how to interpret that yet. There's been little change in perceptions of risk of workplace use. Um, but a small increase in the prevalence of workers who think that it might be allowed in different situations. So I think that's something to keep in mind. And then some of the new findings post-legalization that we don't have a pre-legalization comparison for. Um, there were few workers that reported commuting to and from work um, after using cannabis or obtaining cannabis at work. Uh, some workers are using cannabis to treat a work-related um, injury or illness. And um, most workers are not receiving cannabis-related information um, at work, which, um, again, as I keep saying, I think is a, an important knowledge gap. And they also don't necessarily know what to do if they find that a coworker is impaired. Uh, so in terms of next steps, um, I, as I mentioned, we have our next survey cycle, which will be going out um, later this year. Um, and then we'll have another survey cycle um, uh, in 2021. And what we're hoping to do is also be able to start to see how things are changing in terms of the introduction of edibles as well. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. We have plenty of time for questions. We have 25 minutes. I have a couple of them. I want to get back to them. Thanks for uh, this. This was very informative. Um, just a question around, I guess, two questions. So, was there any differentiation or information given on the difference between THC and CBD? Which we focus seems to be a little bit on impairment. And the other is around asking workplaces whether they actually had um, health plan policies for the use of medical cannabis. Because I think the answer is you, know, you might have a different response if you have a, a workplace in which there's coverage for medical cannabis. 
Yeah, so we asked, we do have some questions. We do have a question around um, whether the worker was using, uh, the type of um, product they were using. So we asked a little bit about the THC CBD ratio. I didn't present it today because we actually changed the question from pre and post legalization. Um, there's no really great way right now that we that um, to measure that, um, so we changed it, and so it was difficult to sort of um, compare. Um, I will say that most workers in our sample tend to report higher THC, um, higher THC use. So, and and even when we look at the people who are saying that they're using it exclusively for medical purposes, I think it was about eight percent. Um, so we do tend to see more workers using higher THC products. We didn't ask a question around employee sponsored um, benefits. Um, that I think would be a really interesting finding. My sense is that most do not provide that um, yet, um, but it would be an interesting finding I think as we, as we progress um, would be something to add. Thank you. And I, sorry, I just realized okay, I should have been you. repeating the question. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nancy. Very nice presentation. Um, I wanted to pick up on your observation that the frequency of past year use uh, declined, the, like the very frequent category, um, or two, I think they were top two categories. And so, yeah, I offer a hypothesis, and that is with the uh, legalization, there was a lot of education about, you know, the ill effects of uh, cannabis and on your brain and so could it have resulted in um, frequent users moderating their use? Yeah, you know, I think um, definitely and I think what we didn't do and I wish I had done this before this presentation is also done the same thing what we did with workplace use is looking among all respondents just to get a sense of frequency of use to see if it's changing. Um, it could certainly be that people are, there is, there's more information out there. People might might have decreased um, their use, if, especially if they were um, more frequent users. I'm not sure. Um, that's certainly something to keep in mind moving forward. Thank you. Other questions in the room or online? Oh, and then uh, very nice, thank you, uh, Nancy. I, I wonder if you asked or are planning to ask about um, worker awareness of other mm -hmm. OHS policies and practices in their workplaces so as ways to compare. Mm -hmm. um, some of the research that we've been doing lately suggests they don't know about general um, occupational health and safety policies, so maybe it isn't surprising they don't know about policies related to substance use either. Yeah, so the question was whether we are um, going forward, whether we might consider adding some questions around whether workers are aware in general about occupational health and safety policies in their workplace as a comparator because it might be that they're just generally not aware of any of that. Um, that's a good point. I think it would be a nice um, comparator. Of course, adding more questions to our survey is always um, a challenge. Not everyone wants to. I, I have so many ideas of questions I want to add to my survey, and I keep saying, being told I can't. Our survey, sorry, Peter, our survey. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, that is a good that is a good point. I but I, I think it really speaks uh, it really speaks to um, this again this knowledge gap of making sure that workers are really aware of what what they should and shouldn't be what they should and shouldn't be doing what the expectations are. Um, I think is is really important. Hi, I have one question. So just a quick clarification. Um, you got about 50% of your sample back um, for the time two, which is great. Um, when you were doing your comparisons, was it the total time one compared to the total time two or, or just the people who did both? Yeah, that's a good point and I should have mentioned that. Um, so the question was, we because we did follow up with the workers who participated at time one, um, is this is what I presented today just based on the people who participated at both time one and time two or um, among everybody? And so the answer is it's among everybody. So um, we 
we included whether they participate at time one or not. We've included them in this comparison. When we looked at the um, the difference statistically between the two, we did um, a, account for that clustering um, that people could be participating at both time points. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll put back one more, and then. Yeah, and I wish I had that complete. I don't want to totally. So the question was whether um, we did ask a question around source of cannabis, how they're obtaining their cannabis, and did we look at that? So I haven't. I don't want to misspeak. Um, I have an idea in my head of what we were seeing, um, but we. I, I'd certainly happy to share that with you um, after. Um, yeah, I didn't look at that for this presentation. Sorry. Just go online and then. Uh, Nancy, this came up at our advisory committee meeting. Do you have any insights on workers' perceptions of injuries um, or events related to impairment from cannabis before or after legalization? Um, do I have to repeat that? No, okay. Um, no, so we do have some, we haven't looked at this yet, but we do collect some information from workers about whether they've had um, any injuries, um, their workplace absences, um, I think a question around productivity. Um, so we could certainly start to look at changes over time in some of those measures after, before and after legalization, but we haven't done that. We haven't looked at that yet. Hey, I was just wondering, for non-smokers, do you think when all these new rules came in that a whole lot of non-smokers decided to try cannabis? Um, my sense, so the question was whether we think that non-smokers non might have decided to try cannabis. Um, my sense is that if you were using cannabis before legalization, you're just going to continue to have used it now. Um, and that people are, I mean, I don't really know in terms of the difference between smokers and non-smokers, whether there, there's a propensity there. Um, but I think that, again, I think people might be trying it out but not necessarily becoming frequent daily users yet. Oh, yeah, I'll go online and I'll go back to Kim. Do you know, uh, good presentation. Uh, uh, do you know whether, um, uh, have you looked at who has had medical authorization? Because I think at a national level, the survey shows the more I'm using it with no medical authorization, because now it's available. Whoever you want. Yeah. So the question is, have we looked a little bit more about the people that are use, have medical authorization versus those that don't? So we haven't looked at that yet. Um, but I do. I I agree with you that I think generally speaking, um, medical authorization people who use cannabis for medical purposes. There are a large proportion of people who don't have a medical authorization for use. There are a lot of barriers to receiving medical authorization. Um, in this country, even though we've had a program for almost 20 years. Um, so I think that certainly with legalization, there is now an, uh, another access point for people to try it. Um, but hopefully as we move forward, there will be um, at least an increase in the guidance that's provided, I think, by physicians. I think that would be in, important. Um, especially for workers in terms of guidance around workplace risks um, of use. Okay, so I'm going to go online to Ken. So online, sir. Uh, someone observed that there was a slight increase in use in the manufacturing sector, and I'll just say because it was just it was manufacturing, transport, and warehousing. Trade, yeah. So there was a slight lift there. She's but not statistically, not statistically yeah. significant. Yeah. Okay, yes. thank you. But she was wondering if whether there might be some benefit to investigating high risk or uh, high safety sensitive industries. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we, we again, one of the things that we adjusted for when we did our comparison between pre and post legalization, we did adjust for job hazard. 
So whether the person was in a hazardous job. So all of the findings are based on accounting for whether they're in a hazardous job. But definitely that is a group that we really want to think about are those individuals that are in um, safety sensitive work positions. Thank you, Nancy. Great presentation. So, you know, it's like a hundred questions coming at you, but, but here's just a, a descriptive detail I'd be interested in. Among past year use, we report that they have used cannabis two hours before or at work, and they mostly men. Oh, yes, I knew that I knew that question would come. Hin me, where's Hin me? Hin me knew that question would come. We, I do have some of that. Um, I haven't looked, I, I don't want to say, again, I don't want to misspeak, but I, um, I think generally speaking, we see similar trends around overall cannabis use. I will say at least that. So we do have um, a greater proportion of male workers reporting overall cannabis use. I don't want to misspeak, though, about the workplace yeah. use. So why would that be? About why male, yeah. why men? <laughs> I don't want to get into this gendered uh, discussion, <laughs> but yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, one more question around, or a question around the delivery method, and you may have covered this early on and I might have missed it. Did you capture sort of how, or maybe the next iteration of surveys would be like, are people using edibles or oils? Mm -hmm. Is it topical? Is it, you know, with the introduction of edible, I saw that that was indicated there, but um, it might be different if we ask. Yeah, so the question was whether we had asked, um, we have questions on the method of, of consumption. And we do have that. I didn't present it today because we actually didn't see any real changes. Most workers, I think it's about two thirds of workers, um, their main method of consumption is still smoking. Um, we, again, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to present it because I didn't want it to be misconstrued. Um, we changed our what we had in our first survey, we didn't have a specific um, item around oils. And then what we were finding is that people were commenting and saying that they, this is their main method. They were in, in the other category. They would say oils are their main method. So we added that to the second survey. And so we do see, so what basically essentially we see a bit of a, an increase in people from pre to post legalization saying that they're using um, oils, tinctures, capsules. But I think some of that is off. So what we also see is a decrease in edibles. But I think some of it that some people were positioning themselves in the edible category on the first survey. So I don't really, essentially, the bottom line is I don't think there's been a change. We'll know maybe going forward, because um, we're hoping to keep that question um, the same moving forward. And we'll sort of see if there's been any change in terms of how they're consuming. Generally speaking, though, most are still smoking. Would topicals be included in that then? Topicals, we had another category, and almost nobody said topicals. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so the question was whether we um, ran the same analyses just among the people who've participated at both time one and time two. And I'm mean, looking to hear me, but I don't think we've done that. We have not done that yet. Um, but that's a good point. I think that's something that, and I mean, we do want to start to look at sort of that at the individual level what's changing. Right now, we're sort of just looking at it cross-sectionally. Um, but that's certainly, I think, an important thing to look at going forward. Thanks. I've got another question online. Um, not entirely sure what uh, Jamie's out after, but it's about uh, legalization um, and how it's impacted workers' compensation claims. So did you gather any information about workers' compensation claims in the survey? Uh, we haven't, um, but I will say that there is an interesting study that 
came out recently from the U.S. around medical legalization of cannabis. Um, and in, it was a very modest decrease, but they found that in states that had medical legalization <coughs> of cannabis, there was a slight drop in workers' compensation claims. The authors hypothesized that they were maybe using it, um, using cannabis to offset some of the symptoms and then they didn't have to have a claim. But we don't have that um, information, but I think it's a really interesting potential research opportunity going forward. So the participant is typing right now might have some clarification. So there'll be sure. other questions. Are there any other questions in the room? So uh, we are trying, so we have a, a couple of publications um, that we're trying to get published right now from the first survey. Um, this is going to be sort of the next paper that we're hoping to um, get out soon and published. Um, and we have a website, Cindy always wants us to point out, we have a website that anytime there's an update and there's newsletters, anytime there's an update that um, uh, you can access the information there. And will your slides be posted? And our slides will be posted in a couple of weeks, in I think. Week. Okay. Good. And of course, any questions, you could always um, contact me. Sorry, we have one more question. Did you see any difference between management and workers in usage? <laughs> oh, um, that is also, uh, so I didn't look at it here. So I can't say that, but that's a good um, point to, to, in, to look at. We do have one question around whether they are in a supervisory role. So it will be interesting to see if there's differences between supervisors and non-supervisors. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just one more question. So Nancy, just remind me, is the uh, can question interview or administered or is it an online survey? Yeah, so it's, um, it's both. So we have um, telephone and online. So, for example, if a large employer <laughs> wanted to approach your team, including you, to invite their workforce to complete the survey, let's well, say the Arthritis Society wanted to reach out to your members, right? Is that feasible? Yeah, so the question was uh, whether it would be feasible for if, if certain workplaces, large workplaces, organizations want to repeat the survey um, with their workers, um, whether that would be feasible. And yes, we are very open to um, collaboration. Just, I guess just to add on to that, you know, when we're doing a pan Canadian survey, we're trying to get across industries. I mean, some people have a very industry-specific focus. And that's great. They should go ahead and fund us to do that. We we try and get across all industries at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.